This video is all about the stochastic oscillator. We're going to take a look at what the stochastic oscillator is, what it measures, how to add it to a chart, what you're looking for, how to interpret what you're reading. And we're also going to explain what the difference is between a fast stochastic and a slow stochastic. So do keep watching to the end of the video so that you get to find out all this different information. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212, and we add tutorials about the financial markets, about trading and investing to YouTube on a regular basis. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that just by clicking on the red subscribe button, because that's the easiest way to find out whenever we've added a new video. Well, we're going to look at another oscillator today, the Stochastic Oscillator. And it's similar in some ways to the relative strength index, the RSI that we've been looking at in our recent video. So you might want to check some of those out because there is some crossover in terms of concepts between the two. Well, let's take a look now at what the stochastic oscillator is. The stochastic oscillator works by looking at the same thing as the relative strength index, the RSI, and the rate of change oscillator, which we looked at in previous videos. And the thing that they all look at is price momentum. So they're all momentum oscillators. Basically, they're looking at the rate at which price is changing. And the stochastic oscillator is a pretty venerable thing. It has a long history of use and was actually developed in the 1950s by a technical analyst called Dr. George Lane. And the stochastic remains a very popular technical indicator to this day. And some further points then about the stochastic oscillator. Like the relative strength index, the RSI, the stochastic oscillator gives indications of when it thinks the market is overbought and oversold. It does this by looking at the current price and comparing it to price in the past, to a look back period. The difference here is that the stochastic oscillator in that look back is not just comparing price to previous price levels, but it's factoring in the highest high and the lowest low across the period of its look back in making its comparison. And the value of the oscillator is bounded between zero and a hundred. And now moving on to how the stochastic oscillator actually works, it appears like other oscillators we've looked at below the main price chart, so it appears as a separate chart, and it plots two lines on that chart. The first line is what we call percentage K, and with trading 212's app, that appears this kind of light blue line, and then it plots the second line, which is percentage D is its name, and that appears as a default in trading 212's app as a red line. And so the stochastic oscillator looks a bit like this. So bounded between zero and 100, and then the default overbought region is any reading higher than 80, and the default oversold region is any value below 20. And then the two lines sort of quite closely follow each other and occasionally cross over, as we can see in this uh, illustration representing the stochastic. Let's move on now to look at the calculation behind the stochastic oscillator. So we have the percentage K line that we talked about, and that is calculated according to this formula. So first of all, we have C, which is the current closing price, and we subtract from that this low value LN, that's the low across our look back stretch of time, across N periods. And then we divide through that number by h high over n periods minus that low value, and then we multiply the number by 100 to give ourselves our percentage k. So n, as we said, was the number of periods for our look back comparison, and the default value for n with trading 212's app is 15. So you're looking back at the lows and the highs across 15 periods. And then percentage d, which is sometimes called the signal line, is an average of percentage K values over D periods. And the default for D is three. That's a pretty much a standard value that's always used for D three. And it basically means that our signal line percentage D is just a kind of smoothed out version of the percentage K line. 
Let's now look at adding the stochastic oscillator to a chart using Trading 212's app. Here we are in Trading 212's web app, and I'm looking at a daily chart of AstraZeneca. So what I'm going to do is just right click and select Indicators, Oscillators, and then we're going to look for the stochastic oscillator. Now we've got a couple of choices here. We have a slow stochastic oscillator, and up here we have a fast stochastic oscillator. And we'll explain what the difference between these two are a bit later on. So for the time being, I'm just gonna add on the fast stochastic oscillator. So up pops this dialog box, and we've got some various variables that we can choose. We've got that D period, which as we just said, the default is three. The K period, that was, N, the number of periods for our look back for percentage K, 15 there as the default, as we said. And then we can choose what our overbought and oversold regions are, 80 and 20 are the standard. We've got those colors, I said, light blue for percentage K and red for percentage D. So I'm gonna click confirm, and then the oscillator appears there at the bottom of the screen. We can see our overbought and oversold regions marked on, and then the light blue percentage K line with the smoother uh, averaged out percentage D line there. Um, and you can see there's plenty of crossovers and plenty of times where they've moved into overbought and oversold. So let's now talk about how to use the stochastic oscillator. Now there are a number of different ways in which the stochastic oscillator can be used. What I'm gonna do here is just to summarize three common ways in which it is used. So three different ways of using the stochastic. First one of which is to use it just to indicate overbought and oversold regions and use those as indications of potential reversals in price. Another way is to look for crossovers of percentage K and percentage D and use those as trading signals. So if you have percentage K crossing below percentage D, then you would sell. If you have percentage K crossing above percentage D, then you buy. And then finally, divergences between price and oscillator. So in the previous video, we looked at divergences with price and the RSI, and basically it would be the same concept here. So worth checking out that video to learn a bit more about divergence and oscillators. So focusing solely on overbought and oversold indications is a very basic usage. And that could be as simple as seeing the oscillator move like here into the overbought zone and just making a note that one of your inputs is telling you to keep an eye out for a possible top in the market. Or another way to interpret that might be as crossing over into overbought is your preliminary warning and then dipping out of overbought could be a sell signal and vice versa. Here, the oscillator dipping into oversold could be a preliminary warning of a possible bottom, and then climbing back out of oversold could be a buy signal. And explaining a bit more about the second way of interpreting the stochastic oscillator, which was using crossovers as signals, the percentage K line crossing below the percentage D line would be a sell signal. So in the diagram above, this here is a sell signal. That's an example of the percentage K crossing below percentage D. And the percentage K line crossing above the percentage D line would be a buy signal. So once again, in the diagram above, a crossover like this here would be an example of a buy signal. And just a quick word on divergence to illustrate what I mean by that. Let's say that this is our chart of price. And we can see in this snapshot of time that the market has been making successively higher peaks. It's been making higher highs. If we look below at the stochastic oscillator, we can see that initially we had agreement between the oscillator and price. The oscillator was rising, but here the oscillator has failed to make a new high and it's starting to dip. So we have divergence between price and the oscillator, and that could be a signal of a potential reversal. And going back to this summary of those three ways that I've been talking about, another idea might be to use all three together so that you could look for overbought and oversold as your kind of preliminary setup and then look for a confirmation by looking for divergence between price and the oscillator, and then finally, 
looking for a crossover of percentage K and percentage D as your final signal to trade. And finally, let's talk about the difference between fast and slow stochastic. So the stochastic calculation that we've run through so far is for what is known as the fast stochastic in trading 212's app. Now I've mentioned before that one of the problems with oscillators can be the false signals that they give. And basically the slow stochastic is an attempt to try and reduce the number of false signals. So the difference between fast and slow then is about sensitivity. The fast stochastic is more sensitive than the slow stochastic oscillator. The slow stochastic smooths out the percentage K line by averaging over D periods. And the default for D is three in trading 212's app. In other words, the percentage K line for the slow stochastic is actually like the percentage D line in the fast stochastic. And then we average this value again over a number of periods, usually three again, to get our percentage D for the slow stochastic. So percentage D for the slow stochastic is then an average of this smoother percentage K. Here we are in the app again, looking at that same chart of AstraZeneca that we added the fast stochastic to earlier. So let's now add on the slow stochastic and we'll make a comparison between the two. So slow stochastic oscillator, and we can see that we've got these two values for different periods that we're averaging our line. So we've got three as our default for averaging that slow K, and then we've got three for the averaging of that slow K to give us the D percentage line. So we'll click confirm, and the slow stochastic is now at the bottom below the fast stochastic, and we can see that it, the percentage K line is smoother here, and the uh, upshot of that is that if we're looking at, say, crossovers of the lines as our signal, that we get fewer of those crossovers than we do with the more sensitive fast stochastic oscillator. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing about the stochastic oscillator. If you did, please just take a moment to hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Why not let us know what you think about the stochastic oscillator? Is it a tool that you use in your trading? How does it work for you? Let us know by dropping us a message in the comments section. We do read every message we receive there. But that's all for now for me, Peter Martin and Trading212. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. So long for now.